What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marf Fugle News. Tonight, we're going to talk about many things, so stick around, including my health. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. What is happening, people? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Uh, we have a few stories here today. We're not doing a super long show. For those of you who like short shows, uh, this will be one of them. Uh, just to let you know, I was in the hospital over Christmas, and I'll talk about that more later. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll talk about that after we get to the news. Uh, but I am going to try to take it slow here and uh, and try to do what I can. Uh, we basically took all of the most important stories and we compacted them. And then we put the rest over on our website. If you are new here, of course, normally we would go through all of these articles on our website, marfuglenews.com. If we show you a picture, a, a, a tweet, a article, uh, a document, an archived uh, photo, we will make sure to put the link on our website. That way you have the source to everything that we talk about. Now, when you go to our website, you'll see it is very easy to navigate by thumbnail. X marks the spot, mock, mark, uh, mock conflict uh, underway. And then when you click on that, you will see that we have a bibliography of all of our sources. That way you know exactly where your stories are coming from. Uh, again, this also has a yellow bar underneath. Uh, that is actually going to show you all of the web-only content, the stuff that is too hot for TV. Once you hit that yellow, that is a trigger warning. So all everything down below there uh, may be charged left or right. It, again, it's the stuff that we can't cover while staying neutral on the show. And then on the right side, if you do want to support us in any way and prepare yourself, again, we try to pick uh, different affiliates that actually we think will help you save your life, make your life better, or have you better prepared for what we believe is very obviously coming. Again, uh, if you're new here, uh, we have some very educated views on, uh, and again, all of our stuff is changing daily, but we believe with looking at all of the media, and I mean all of it from around the world, and looking at all of the breaking stories coming out, it's pretty easy to see that we're not exactly heading in a great direction. Uh, that's, that's kind of the easy way to put it. And things are getting worse by the day. It doesn't matter what country you are. In fact, just I think today or yesterday, you had an entire country of a billion people uh, you know, basically up in arms and in the streets. So that is happening almost on a weekly basis with different countries. Uh, and who knows where in the U S might happen here. We never know. So, uh, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother Dex. Uh, I might call on Dex a little bit more tonight. Dex, how are you doing and what is happening? Well, hello Adam and hello Google fam. It's just another day in paradise. So, uh, reminder, again, you can follow along on a second device. You can go through these uh, these articles. Again, just the regular news, though, tonight has a lot more there. It's just we basically picked out the, the most important stuff. So, we're going to get that. Global Witness, hey, thanks for stopping by. Says support Marv. Love you all. Hey, thank you, Global Witness. If you guys haven't checked him out, he is really great. Uh, Droned Out, thank you for uh, subscribing. Bible Talk for Common People, Akasha NC, and P. Bayer, thank you so much for uh 
stopping in last time on the show. So I'll get right into the news. Again, China develops AI prosecutor that can press charges with 97% accuracy. I've talked about this. This is, this is really horrifying. And, and if you think that the U.S. and other countries are above this, I guarantee you they're already working on things just like this. But they will try to soft step us into something like this. Uh, what this does, this is an AI system uh, that actually we've covered something sort of in the same realm about a year ago, we covered security cameras for anywhere. Like if you say you go to a mini mart or a, a Target, uh, China developed this software that would essentially spot people that were going to steal before they even stole anything. In fact, they tested it time and time again in real life scenarios, and it was like a 97% uh, success. And what that AI program did is it looked at people's fidgeting, it looked at people's sweat levels. He, I think they even had a heat sensor to see like a raise in body temperature because they're freaked out about to steal something. Uh, it, it looked at uh, how many times they turned over their shoulder and all sorts of weird things and it would combine it and it would give a, a ratio of, of what it thought that person would do and if they would steal or not. And it was like an insane amount and they tested it on hundreds and hundreds of people uh, and uh, or on thousands of people and hundreds of thieves and it was like 97% uh, accurate, which is really crazy to think about. They're looking at just your body language and able to tell that. I, I guess you could say that if you're adding in like heat temperature, you know, temperature signatures and stuff like that, then that would be kind of a, that would be a telltale. But that was, uh, that was kind of in the same realm. This is even worse. People are going to start getting tickets in China for things like dissent. So if they say something about the Chinese government, they will actually automatically get a ticket for it because their AI prosecutor will not only be like the the uh, the snitch but it will also be the kind of the judge and jury and it will find them guilty Dex am I wrong on this like this is basically a this is basically an AI uh, judge right yeah absolutely so they took something like 17,000 cases over many years and they ran it through this engine to try to um, teach it the ability to understand what these different types of, of smaller crimes are that they could easily, you know, just uh, adjudicate with, um, you know, with the software and not have a human involved so that they could just quickly move someone through the process. So, um, yeah, this is, you know, this is not a surprise in my mind because we know they've been doing stuff like this. But, you know, if you think this is only a China thing, you've got, you know, you're kind of misled because, you know, we even have this, you, know, you look at red light cameras, when you look at, you know, uh, toll booth uh, systems that automatically make decisions on, you know, whether or not you're driving and who's license plate or whatever, right? So that stuff's already here. This is just a very advanced, advanced version of it. And uh, again, this is something that, you know, we just kind of feel like this was in a future movie, but this is not. This is not an episode of Black Mirror. This is real China. It says that China has developed an artificial intelligence prosecutor that can charge people with crimes with more than 97% accuracy, researchers claim. The machine can file a charge based on verbal description of the case and was built and tested by Shanghai Pudong People's Purillerate, uh, the biggest and busiest district prosecution office in China. The AI would allow human prosecutors to ease their workload and allow them to only focus on the more complex cases, the project's lead scientist, Professor Shi Yong, said. So I don't know what they're, you know, if, if it did get it wrong, would you be able to appeal this kind of thing? And would that be its own kind of section in it? But I believe they're probably going to, if it's on a lower end crime, they're just going to say you're guilty and oh. then and then you're done. I'm sure they'll say they'll have a review process, but then, you know, yeah. we have a review process and there's humans making decisions and we see how that process sometimes works and a lot of times <laughs> doesn't. Yeah. So another thing to think about is the head chief officer at Pentagon, the U.S. Pentagon, uh, he was, the, I want to say, the chief software officer. And he was an engineer for the Pentagon. His position was actually created a few years ago uh, to, to look at some of this stuff like AI. He actually resigned recently, and this was a high-ranking official at the Pentagon. And his leaving statements were actually quite terrifying. 
he said that not only is China ahead of us in AI, uh, but once they, basically how they look at it is once they're ahead, they're ahead. And it's really hard to catch up. You can't, uh, you can't really supersede that. Now, AI is incredibly important in, you know, in military as well. And if they are that much further ahead of us in AI, that is a really, really horrifying aspect. And I know this sounds even crazier, but uh, now with the robotic technology that they have, I mean, we're talking about things that are possible that weren't possible just a couple of years ago. I mean, we're talking about real life Terminators. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, drone swarms that can you know, outbeat and outmaneuver our uh, best defenses. So I talked to a military official, actually. Uh, well, I was in the hospital and he watched the show. And what he said uh, is that drone swarms is our biggest worry right now, uh, That, or at least that that's what they're being trained for. And that's what a lot of the stuff that is going on. Him and his brother are both uh, enlisted, and uh, he is actually at home visiting family. One of his, uh, one of his parents. And by the way, thank you uh, for being awesome. Um, but one of his parents is actually got the V, and well, ninety uh, four years old, and uh, he had an opinion about that, but I won't share that. Uh, again, 94 years old and is now in hospice. So he got uh, some sort of exception to be there. And then he ended up having some sort of issue and was at the hospital. He said that the these drone, sw these drone swarms are not only bad, uh, but we're talking about production into the millions. We're not talking about, you know, a couple thousand here, a couple hundred or these weapons that shoot 20 of them. Uh, they are watching, and I, I don't know if we've actually covered this or not. I don't know if anybody has covered the amount that they're making. Uh, but what he believes is that they are making millions of these things. Because uh, if you think about it, it's actually very strategic. If you were to send a boom in and take out a whole city, then you have to not only clean that up, if you were going to take over somewhere, and it may not be us, it may be Taiwan, then... Afterwards, if you just nuke the crap out of it, then it's going to be useless grounds for however many years. Uh, if you use traditional weapons, that would be better, but you still have to deal with the cleanup. If you have AI drones, each individual drone has the ability to take out one person. If you have those and they are so smart and they have the range and capability to fly in and pick out each person, then you have a really, really, really horrific and, and scary scenario. And this sounds crazy, uh, but this is exactly what warfare is shaping out to look like. We have drone swarms, they have drone swarms, and so does Russia. Uh, the, this technology has uh, not only kind of leapfrogged, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, well, I wouldn't say it came out of nowhere. Uh, to the public, it came out of nowhere. They had, uh, they had TED Talks and things about this, and of course, showing off new technology and where it might go. Now we know where it went. Uh, that technology, if you see, if you look up a uh, drone swarm uh, TED talk, you'll see kind of the early iterations of this where they were all talking. And then, of course, the public saw these actions in uh, shows of light and, you know, celebrations. They would have drones do all this stuff. But imagine if you see a cloud or what you think is a dark cloud coming over and it's not. It's actually millions of drones and each one is going to pick out a person and uh, essentially off itself that's that sounds really crazy but that is what they are looking at with uh, different scenarios right now so if you think about it it would make a whole lot of sense it would take out the the target it would not damage anything and it could go in buildings it could go pretty much anywhere and by the way we're not talking about a person that's controlling this this is ai so you wouldn't need to worry about a human error uh if he if they don't see the camera these are going off of sensors that are better than what the human can do if you've ever seen somebody take these drones human piloted it is a skill in itself and it is an art if you see anybody that does the high speed uh drone racing those guys are incredible uh the, it, it when you start that you crash a million times uh, that is something that it, it ma they make it look easy where they're flying through windows and through uh, trees and all of this stuff. Anybody who does that will tell you that that's not a beginner. That's somebody who's been doing it for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours, if not thousands. 
So we're talking about kind of like the Tesla uh, autonomous driving only in the, the sh shape of a small drone that's in, uh, inexpensive to make and extremely deadly. So that, that is pretty freaky. And then that, uh, that chief head officer to resign and say that they are so far ahead and we're not going to catch up uh, and basically was concerned saying that, you know, we're, we're pretty screwed because it's extremely important. So obviously that kind of matches up with what he said. That is one of their main, uh, one of their main things on their docket. And then it says, I mm, rain down ballistic missiles on a mock-up of Is's nuclear reactor. Again, that's I and Is. Now, we've talked about how Is, well, is actually planning to take out uh, or possibly practicing to take out their uh, nuclear reactors. But this is an actual practice from the other side uh, practicing to take out Is's nuclear reactors. It says, in a highly suggestive drill, I mm, demonstrated a combined missile and drone strike against a lookalike of Israel's Domona nuclear facility. So this is uh, an image, again, from that. This is pretty freaky stuff. It says, dramatic video has emerged from the mm, state television showing recent tests of ballistic missiles and other weapons aimed against targets that include a rough mock-up of Is's nuclear facility near Demona in the Negev desert. It says in one remarkable sequence, the warhead of what appears to be a Desville medium range ballistic missile or an MRBM leaves an impressively fiery trail behind it immediately before it impacts the target. So that is this one. And this is the, the trail right before it hits. It says the footage comes from a five day exercise known as great profit 17. Okay, so if that doesn't freak you out uh, for a operation name, then I don't know what would. Uh, Great Profit Seventeen. I'm sure. I'm sure a certain group of people's looking at that like, what the heck? Carried out in Southern, uh, mm, which came to an uh, end last Friday. The games were intended as an explicit warning to is. To uh, in light of Tehran's worries over possible Israeli plans to target Iran's own nuclear sites. With that in mind, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps uh, carried out the attack of the mock-up of Demona nuclear complex. It says, quote, through a simulation of Demona atomic facilities, the Revolutionary Guard successfully practiced attacking the critical center of this regime in its missile exercise. What's funny is they always use that word when they uh, when they they say anything publicly. Uh, in fact, Dex, remember we, it was like the last three stories all had that in the official quote from them. Yep, from them. So, uh, great profit seventeen. What a freaky name for uh, a mission. Uh, now this is one of the the this is really the third other hot point for the world for us all to get into a conflict of course because we're on is side uh, you know publicly and then and who knows what the CIA is doing behind closed doors right uh, and then of course Russia and Ukraine and then China and Taiwan and all six of these countries both sides of each one of these is just it's like they're digging their heels in and they're not trying to go anywhere so not not a not a fun time for anybody. Um, thank you, by the way, Michelle K says I fear swarm drones. See, I think most people are uh, again gonna laugh about it, and and uh, you know, I I actually I believe you are sincere, but I I would I would I would most likely we're probably gonna see sarcastic comments about any any kind of stuff that we talk about relating to that. People don't realize how big of a threat this is. Uh, it is extremely efficient. And the only thing that was holding them back from doing this previous years is uh, the technology to be able to have range and to be able to do it themselves. Uh, for one drone prior to this AI kind of development uh, to hit its target, it, you would have to have a human being. In fact, many of the drones that were flying over the Middle E and probably flying over us right now, uh, like the Predator drones and all of those, uh, those were mostly flew by uh, pilots, you know, could be halfway around the world, uh, but that was a human being. In fact, some of them were flown with actual Xbox controllers. 
Uh, some of the uh, remote controlled 50 cals were, you know, you would actually control with an Xbox uh, controller retrofitted for this purpose, right? Uh, but as far as these, uh, these jets, these things, they don't need it. You would need one human per drone. When you have 10,000, it's pretty hard. I mean, you're using up 10,000 man, you know, uh, man, uh, men or women to do that job. Whereas now it can be done all on its own. Now, who knows the mistakes it's going to be made uh, that are going to be made, but not not a good uh, not a good thing by any means. Just wanted to refresh and make sure. And thank you everybody that has popped up. I know it's a later show. I've been uh, trying to do whatever I can to 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 try to get everything done as much as I can. I'll, I'll tell you about what what I've been going through. Uh, but first, I'll get through the news so then anyone who doesn't want to hear about it uh, doesn't have to. Uh, Tank Ace 653 thank you so much for your support. Sol Rosenberg, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Says Ezra from Hill to sanction uh, fine people for being organic or mm -hmm, unpoked. Yeah, I uh, Ezra from Hill to sanction. Yes, I, I know there are so many uh, crazy things going on. Uh, India, look at what's happening in India right now. It's just absolutely insane. Uh, and then Stereo Oretz, thank you. And then uh, Theo G, Charity Sullivan, thank you guys. And I appreciate you new new people. Uh, welcome, uh, w welcome, uh, welcome anybody that you see come in that's new. Uh, but especially Sandra R, thank you for being here. Karen from Columbus, uh, Owen, thank you. And then Nothing to Fear, thank you for following. Uh, T-Man, Red Pill, Respiratory, Jane's here, Carrie Ray, thank you. And then for anybody that is sleeping and couldn't make the late show, thank you for watching the replay. I appreciate you. And then, of course, we have Ukrainian troops test Javelin missiles against Russian cage-style improvised tank armor. Again, this is like every side is is physically doing their their the, kind of the last steps, right? Recent live fire maneuvers have pitted the American supplied anti tank missiles against the kind of cage armor now appearing on some Russia tanks. Uh, Dex, do you want to talk about this real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so uh, the Ukraine army actually has a lot, recently got a lot of American made uh, javelins, and javelins are basically used to um, annihilate tanks and specifically going against the Russian tank. So they have been uh, running these drills and creating these um, armaments on these vehicles that simulate what's there and doing this live out in the open, uh, probably as a way of beating their chest, showing, you know, Putin, hey, look what we've got from America and look what we've got to use against you. Um, so obviously this is, you know, not a sign of let's get together and, and make peace, but more of a sign of, you know, don't cross that line because we're ready for you. Well, and then, uh, I heard that, you know, if it kind of is tripping me out is lately, we've heard so much about now India is possibly doing these drills with Russia. Russia is very, very close allied with China. India and China are enemies they've been fighting over the border their border for a really long time himalayan mountains they actually had a instance last year where at least 20 indians were actually pushed to their doom unarmed by the way uh, we at least know that the uh, indian side was unarmed and then of course we don't know how many chinese perished in that that fight uh, but the soldiers met up on one of the mountains and they were physically fighting even to the point where they were throwing each other off of the cliffs. Pretty crazy scenario and it happened in real life. Uh, you would see that in like a James Bond movie or something, but it happened. So that was their last, it was the bloodiest day in their history as, you know, kind of adversaries for a, a long time. Now there's weird news talking about India possibly joining Russia uh, and possibly even being friendly uh, with China around that same time that we heard that they were possibly drilling. And again, Dex, didn't we have, we had solid backup for that. And people go, no, no, you must be thinking about uh, somebody in the Indian Ocean. Or, And then we said, no, we actually see India doing drills with Russia. Yeah, they actually joined in. I want to say with uh, 
I ran to the store and uh, Russia and maybe China was there too. But yeah, they they joined in on that uh, that drills, those drill uh, rehearsals. So I, again, we don't want to tell you anything that's not accurate. People didn't believe it because they are so you know they're vitriol towards each other. So uh, we uh, India has a ton of our tech, like a ton. India has just an unbelievable amount of, in fact, they've spent like 3.4, uh, I want to say billion, uh, or trillion dollars on our gear. Uh, I want to say billion, but that doesn't sound like much in uh, military world. So it might be 3.4 trillion, uh, in our gear. If somebody wants to Google that, uh, India spent blah, 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 3.4, I know is the, the, the number. It's at least billion. So just assuming it's $3.4 billion in our gear, it's like half, if, if we ever do go against these people where we're friends with them now, we'll end up fighting with our own gear. Think about that. It's almost like we should, if we're going to be allied with somebody and we sell them gear, we should almost put like a, a back door on it. Like, no, you know, I know that sounds crazy, but if you think about it, if you go, hey, you're an ally, as long as you're going to stay an ally, we're going to sell you uh, weapons. If you turn on us, uh, then, you know, you're not going to be able to at least use our weapons against us. I don't know. Does that sound, I guess then that would be, uh, then if we screwed them over, then we could totally just take them over, huh? I don't know. It just seems, it, it seems crazy that we're, a lot of these countries we have given weapons to we're going to be sending in our men to be taken out by our own weapons and like super high tech, uh, really insane weapons that are out right now. I mean, it, people, I'd hope we'd have back doors on all of that. I, I don't know, but I would hope you would think, right. I mean, China does it. Do you think like you have to at least do, I mean, you have to, it's not really sinking to the level. If, I mean, if you want to be dominant in, in the military space, if you are making gear that's highly tech, you know, technologically sound you would think that you would put in something like hey india you're only going to take this if you realize that we're going to turn it off on you if you try to use it against us I, I think that would make sense they could use it against anybody else just not uh not us so this doesn't look good you know some say 275,000 troops in russia some closer to the border and then about half uh farther away there's all sorts of talk of, of now they're trying to flip up and, and at, no one really knows what's going on. Uh, and they're calling for you know them to write agreements. We don't know what's going to happen with this. But it seems like they've really dug their heels in. And if they do go to conflict, uh, you know we're supposed to be helping protect Ukraine. Some say that we won't do anything. Some say that we'll go in uh, all, you know, possibly even first strike on Russia. At least uh, that's according to uh, Senator Wicker, who was, is on the Senate Armed Committee. Uh, pretty pretty crazy stuff. Survival Living, glad to see you back home, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Black Sheep 324. By the way, check out Survival Living. He's a really good guy. And then Drone Swarms were used in the movie Angel Has Fallen, which came out in 2019. Uh, Black Sheep 324, that is the movie I always use that as an example. Uh, but imagine that, and now they have these new things. They're whole platforms of thousands of them. They just take off and go. So, and that now they can, it's not even a missile launcher. They all can take off on their own. And some of them even have little like bottle rockets that launch them up. So think about a box about a, of about a thousand of them. And they do exactly what that movie showed. If you look at Angel Has Fallen, you will know exactly what we're dealing with uh, as far as these drones, how they picked out people. In that movie, it shows Gerard Butler as the one guy that these 40 drones try to attack the president. It uh, attacks the president. Uh, it uh, attacks everybody around him, all of the FBI agents. It shows a scene where, where these drones are facial recognizing everybody and then they recognize Gerard Butler and they don't attack. So what does that do? That makes uh, the U.S. government think, why didn't they attack you? Uh, were you behind this? Were you involved? Why were you the only one that was spared? They targeted everyone very spe spe specifically, right? Uh, so in that movie, 
it might be a goofy movie or whatever. Uh, you know, it's an action flick with kind of a corny, uh, you know, some plot f- uh, flaws there. But it has some real stuff in there. And they used actual uh, military. If you look at the credits, you'll see there was like six or seven consultants that were majors or generals. Right. They, they go to the real people to try to get it as accurate as possible. So one thing when you when people talk about predictive programming, you should also talk about how there is real coordination between FBI, CIA uh, and, uh, of course, military when they're making new content, and new movies for Hollywood. Hollywood and the military have gone hand in hand for years. How do you think you get uh, movies with all of these brand new tanks and brand new gear? They actually do that with permission from uh, certain, you know, certain militaries. Uh, with Red Dawn, Red Dawn, the new version, the the newer remake, uh, that again, that was something that very well could have been propaganda. I mean, the whole movie in itself. So pretty, pretty crazy thing. And I'm talking about the new one, not the old one. Luis, do you, man? You are appreciated. Hope you feel better. I, uh, yeah, just crazy stuff cat tinsley don't look up is word for word everything we talk about i swear the writer must be a fugal fam love you all so cat tinsley go to my twitter i'll show you uh i did a huge thread on all of the stuff don't look up by far is the freakiest movie and i dex i don't think you've seen it yet have you you dex i know i have not if you have not seen don't look up i want to do a video on how uh, really weird that is and if you look at all of the articles that we've covered and all of the stories uh, from in don't look up when they talk about how the asteroids are worth trillions I linked several sources over the last four years in the last four years it's like it was almost like T-Man was president and they they have Glenn Close being T-Man they have Jonah Hill being uh, his son-in-law or whatever uh, they have, uh, they basically have that set in a world of the previous presidency. And they also have, I mean, they have the don't look up hats, like the, the red hats and everything. I mean, there's a lot of re, uh, kind of real stuff. And that director, Adam McKay, he specializes in uh, based on true events. Only this movie, he says, based on real events dot 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 that haven't happened dot 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 yet and i'm telling you it's freaky the the fact that dart was actually uh postponed and it makes you think like this whole lockdown situation the last two years and every country falling in line i mean every country it's weird it's beyond weird i don't even think our human brains can fathom that this could be so huge and it that it could be totally out of outside the box and you know people are going to pick up the scraps after whatever happens right maybe that's why they are doing now maybe that's why they're getting ready for all of this uh taking over of places again uh just a finish up on this ukrainian uh the this this test it says the video of the javelin live fire exercise appeared today on facebook page of ukraine's joint forces press service more details have been provided on the page of the general staff of the armed forces of ukraine which notes that the maneuvers took place on a training range in the east of the country close to the front lines the target was engaged at a distance of about one mile though the missile has demonstrated ability to hit targets up to up to three miles away In the past, Uh, the troops involved had apparently not fired the javelin before and were training prior to being deployed in Donbass. It says of particular interest, however, though, the targets that shown being engaged, this appears to be a Cold War War era tank uh, turret, perhaps from a T-64 mounted on what looks like the chassis of a BTR series armored personnel carrier. So they uh, they basically put... uh, a Franken tank there. That's what we'll call that. The Tankenstein. Uh, they, they put Tankenstein there to get, to get beat up and, uh, and killed. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty crazy stuff there. And then, uh, before we go any further, I do want to remind you everybody. In fact, we have just a couple days left. If you do want to get an EMP shield, this is probably one of the best times ever. If you don't know what an EMP shield is, is it an actual, it's an actual device that can ground the signal of 
all three phases of an EMP before it can fry your device. So if we have an attack, say, from any of these adversaries, or uh, again, if we have the natural kind to CME hit and knock down our grid or uh, again, basically knock out anything that was electrical, uh, You, your device, your car, uh, your generator, your house, your RV would be protected. This is what these uh, devices do. Now, this same company is not only dealing with civilians. Uh, in fact, during the T-Man uh, administration, they were actually brought on. Uh, they are now officially a part of the EMP Resilience Report. In fact, I believe they've been in several now. Uh, by DHS, that warning that told every American to have six months to a year of food due to the risk of an EMP happening uh, or just a grid down situation, uh, just period. In fact, the natural kind of this is going to happen. It just depends if it happens before uh, we have our grid hardened. Uh, our, our, our grid is so vulnerable right now. That is why they are actually hardening all of the military, government buildings, and they're using companies like EMP Shield to do that. In fact, EMP Shield has done work for uh, DHS, uh, DHS uh, DOD, and now, of course, the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid as well, which is separate. So again, basically the entire United States has uh, a contract with different uh, sections of this. So again, you can get the civilian kind of this protection. If they're doing it, then most likely it's probably a good idea to do it yourself. Uh, go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. The best part is you get our $50 off that you always get on top of their year-end sale. Uh, again, they started this uh, before Christmas and they're ending it New Year. So you have a few more days left. And then again, that will give you upwards uh, of $70 off at least. And then it stacks on top of that. So if you get one for your car, one for your house, one for your uh, generator, solar generator, uh, then you can end up stacking and even saving more. It's a great way to do it because especially when most people have to get at least two or three of these uh, to protect the different things they need. If you have a car, you don't want to be stuck somewhere out in the cold. So yeah, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It's 100% American made. It's a veteran owned business. And it, again, is something that is the real deal holy field protection. All right, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, NASA enlists 24 theologians to assess how the world would react to the discovery of alien life. This is really weird, and I am just like, part of me kind of wants to lash out and go, this is such a big distraction. They purposely do this kind of thing to make people questioned, to make people start, you know, rumors and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if aliens are coming, but I do know that uh, they definitely are nowhere short in the distraction department. Uh, in fact, we they got through a lot of political stuff and they got bills passed and all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you remember during that 180 day period where they told us that they were going to release all of this information on UFOs and then they ended up giving uh, us a big nothing burger. And the reason why is everybody talked about it at, uh, of course, the water cooler instead of talking about the many other things. In fact, when they give you something that's safe to talk about at work and you're trying to kill time, that's where a lot of the rumors and that's where a lot of information ends up getting spread around. But if they put out at least a few like just really juicy stories that you feel safe with talking about anybody at the office, then that's what's going to be talked about and not the other things like your doubts or your questions, your hard questions into what they're actually doing. Makes sense, right? That's just my theory on it. It says NASA looks to the heavens for help. Agency enlists about 24 theologians. So they're actually hiring 24 guys or women, gals just in general, to assess the world, how it would react to the discovery of alien life on distant planets and how it might change our perception of gods and creation. NASA is looking to the heavens for help with assessing how humans will react if alien life is found on other planets and how the discovery could impact our ideas and gods and creation. So, you know what most people get from this is that they did find UFOs or find alien life on other planets, and now they're hiring 24 people 
uh, because they want to tell us, but they don't know if they should, or they're looking for uh, answers. There's a small chance that, who knows, maybe they really did discover it, and they're really going to tell us, right? Again, small chance. And well, Haven't we heard also that parts of the military were doing something similar? They were planning strategically how to announce and what the reactions would be and how they needed to message uh, this type of scenario should it go down? That's right. I actually forgot about that. So now you have the military and NASA preparing. And, you know, there's a theory out there for a long time, kind of like all these other theories that ended up being true. Oh, that's right. Everything you hear on the Internet, if you hear it on the Internet, it's got to be true. Oh, wait, it actually is coming true, or a lot of it is. Maybe not the comments of the people, but some of the bigger stories like, you know, several have. So they're preparing uh, possibly a false alien invasion, or they are preparing to tell us that uh, Amuamua swung by dropped off a scout and somebody came down and talked to Bernie Sanders and gave him a pair of gloves and said, Hey, can you sit on that bench for a minute? And that was it. But now they're trying to figure out how to tell us uh, what happened. It says NASA is looking to the heavens for help with assessing how humans will react. If alien life is found on other planets, how this discovery could impact everything from our religions to everything. It says the agency is hiring 24 theologians to take part in its program at the Center for Theological Inquiry, CTI, at Princeton University in Jersey, which NASA gave a $1.1 million grant in 2014. It says CTI is discovered as building bridges of under-understanding, and I, it does say under-under, standing by convening theologians, scientists, scholars, and policymakers to think together and inform public thinking on global concerns. The program aims to answer questions that have baffled us since the beginning of time, such as what is life? What does it mean to be alive? Where do we draw the line between human and the alien? What are the possibilities for sentient life in other places? Now that NASA has two rovers on Mars, several probes are orbiting Jupiter and Saturn, and is set to launch the James Webb Telescope tomorrow, and I believe it's uh, this was a couple days ago, right? It says uh, that to study the galaxy, star, and planet formulation in the universe, it seems that the agency is hopeful or on the right path to discovering life outside of Earth. So, again, you could look at it multiple ways. A couple of the ways, though, is like, okay, they're hiring 24 theologians. They're actually paying them to do this, uh, that sounds like it sounds like you're hiring a uh, like you've got a product about to come out. So you hire uh, you pay people to survey it, right? Or you pay a marketing team to market it. Uh, as far as this goes, this is more like how are people going to react, and should we tell people? It's kind of is it kind of uh, kind of spooky, but uh, my uh, my idea is that the most likely this will be just a, a bunch of bunch of slide money over here and and uh, buy that twenty four thousand dollar gold toilet seat uh, so you can write it off, right? But who knows? Who knows? Uh, Dex, do you think that they uh, were doing something something fishy here, or do you think that they might have found something? Well, I think if they have something, they probably had it for a long time. And if they are going to do a reveal, um, they certainly want to get their ducks in a row. Um, but on the flip side, they would have probably done this or done something like this in a lot more secrecy. So maybe this is part of a communication strategy to do it publicly, to let people know this for various reasons, whether it's true or whether it's false and they want you know, people to believe it's true. So either way. Well, it would definitely, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it would, I mean, I guess for parts of the Bible, it says that the earth is the only uh, planet, right? So that, uh, but I just wonder if there would be a way for it all to be true, right? I don't know. 
Uh, Tank Ace, thank you again. I appreciate your su uh, support. Luis, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Everybody that popped in over on DLive, L Luna 3377 thank you so much. Uh, Panhandle Prepper, so glad you're feeling better. Adam, stay close to our Lord Jesus. Pray and prep Fugal fam. Uh, I still need your prayers, actually. I'll talk about that here in one second. Bobby D, Michelle K, uh, Tedelec, military hand-sized swarm drones. Yes, uh, exactly. Michelle K, each equipped with a single shot for extermination. Uh, think about that. It's and that's in uh, that's in Songbird. That freaks me out because that is uh, a real. That's not even a possibility. That's going to be the future. Uh, games like what was that? Uh, Watch Dogs Two, the one in London. That that video game. It's a video game for anybody that's that is not into video games. This game shows London with all types of different drones flying above from news drones, traffic drones, uh, delivery drones, uh, police drones. Uh, it has this whole like ecosystem above and you can hack any of them and kind of use their powers or whatever. It's a stupid game, but it's, it's a real thing. Like it's going to happen. We're going to be monitored 24 seven, I guess if, if nothing changes, right? And then Duchess of Carolina, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's, fam. Vault 1-1, hey, Marv, glad to see you are okay. Again, uh, still need your prayers. I'll, um, I'll just get into that. Recalcitrant, thank you so much. I appreciate that as well. Hey, fam, Adam Dex and Moz, Merry Christmas. Watching all a uh, peaceful day. And then Lead Dispenser, thank you to the health. Um, all right, so, um, so I, I, I've been talking about this with Dax and I almost want to do, uh, its own video on it, uh, because it, things are so screwed up and, um, so you guys probably heard Dex, Dex's wife, uh, missed a stare. And everybody's done it. Everybody in their in the in the entire world has missed that last step or missed the top step. And when you work for yourself, it's really crappy. A lot of people that um, a lot of people now they have here in the United States they have what's called Obamacare, right? Or they have they have health care. So certain states don't see why other people in certain states don't have Obamacare or uh, don't have health care because now it's like a required thing. Not everybody has health insurance and there's reasons why. And that's because, so Dex, do you want to give a perfect example of why it's so stupid in, in Georgia in certain well, cases? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can depend on your age and, you know, what, but like, you know, as an example, I was looking at, at one policy, it was going to cost, you know, $1,300 a month with a $17,000 deductible. So by the time you've paid all of that throughout the entire year, you're in for like 35 grand. That's a lot of money. Um, now don't kid, don't kid yourself. If you have, you know, a major, major, you know, $200,000 event, that's probably cheaper. But if you don't have that all the time and you don't normally have that all the time, it's also very expensive because, you know, and it just it depends on your, your state. It depends on the, the terms. It depends on, you know, what, uh, you know, what age you are and things like that. So yeah, it's, it can be, um, and it don't get, don't get me wrong. You can also get one for probably half that price, but the deductible is even higher and, you know, maybe not even half that price, probably two, you know, two thirds or three fourths of that price. So it's still pretty high for over a thousand dollars for, for me and my wife. So yeah, you just, you know, I just sort of say, well, we'll, we'll roll the dice each year because it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I have done the same. Uh, the, only, the only time I had health insurance was at a previous uh, banking position that was, uh, it was about four years and I had insurance and I never used it once. Uh, but I did, I did enjoy a couple of the times where my doctor's visit was paid for instead of 150 bucks or $40 or $60, it was paid for. And then I would go get uh, antibiotics prescribed. That's where it was really useful. But I was paying, you know, I was paying a huge chunk of my check, especially since it covered more than just me. It was, it was a lot of money. I think it was like $1,300 or $1,400. 
And when things got really tough, it was like I there was so many months where it was just so close to losing it that it's like I wanted to cancel it. But it's like then you can't get it back. You can't just cancel it and get it back the next month. You can't. You have to do it once a year, right? Well, so um, so Dex is broke. Dex's wife broke it, uh, her her uh, foot, and it's like for them, it's like if if it ended up being some crazy break or some crazy surgery, that's out of pocket. I mean, certain and in, even if he had that, you know, really good uh, insurance the first $17,000 would be up for them. If it was a $30,000 thing, then yeah, you got 13,000 paid for. In my case, I started urinating blood and they're still doing tests and stuff and it was a lot. And I got dizzy and I, I basically almost passed out and I went to the hospital on uh, Christmas Eve like Christmas Eve night and I stayed there for basically a day and they did all sorts of stuff and they didn't do certain things because I don't have insurance and I I swear to you on this they said oh well you know we can stick a camera up there we can uh, do this contrast thing we can basically um, you know they can put a camera up there or they can put a catheter in and do this certain thing where they can see where the problems are uh, they did blood work. They said, you know, it's it's not your kidneys or at least your kidney stuff looks fine. But basically, uh, I, I swear to you that the it was like they were talking about all that and it sounded like I was going to go in and I said, so I'll probably be here for at least another day, right? And he's like, yeah, well, we got to get you scheduled for this. And it was Christmas Day, so we don't have many people. And then somebody came in and they said, well, what kind of insurance do you have? And I said, I don't have insurance. Like te- it was like they went back and I could hear them go over to the station, uh, blah blah blah. They talk for a second. And he comes back. He goes, "Well, you know, uh, I'm actually going to release you, and uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna set you up with this outpatient. I'm gonna set you with this. Uh, you're gonna have a close follow up with this doctor, and you need to get in right away. It's an urgent thing that you need to go, and you need to have this done. And Basically, they were like, oh, you know, here's here's uh, the paperwork. This is what you need to do. You need to see a urologist and, and do that. And then and then they set you up with that. And it's like, well, if you don't have insurance, that's out of pocket. So is this going to cost thousands of dollars? Like, you know, you don't, you know, if it goes to the ER, then you have a bill and you've got to pay it at some point, but they, they can treat it even if you don't have the thousands of dollars, right? With the specialist, that's not that's not what it is. You have to at least put the deposit down, whatever else. Uh, not everybody has that, especially if you know. Which, by the way, like my uh, my kids are insured. I'm not though. Um, and it's like so, they set you up with this, and uh, when I called them, they said, "Well, you're a new patient, and this and this and that, and it's urgent." And they said that basically they couldn't even get me in for two to three weeks. And then they looked at the notes and they said, "Oh, it was really urgent," and the doctor put it urgent. It's like this is such a, sh- a, a shitty system. And excuse my French. And I I understand that somebody that uh, pays a third of their income for their insurance is like, "Well, you should just do it. It's worth it." When you have so, when you're barely juggling and getting things, you know, just barely done, it's really hard to to pay an insurance. When even if I had the insurance and I I, I looked at the plans last year too, it would not cover this. It would not, or it wouldn't be above that. And w- the part of the reason why is I'm just literally above that bracket. You know, uh, in Seattle. A family four at seventy thousand dollars a year is extreme poverty. Somewhere else, we would be doing okay. Here, we are considered extreme poverty. And again, I'm between fifty and seventy thousand. So I'm just above where they need you to be to to get like the you know. Basically, there are people I know that pay twenty five dollars a month, and they have a nine hundred dollar out of pocket maximum. If you fall into a weird bracket where you, you make just a little bit too much and not enough, it's like you just get completely screwed. And I don't think people realize that. Like, I, you know, 
I, some, I, it could be prostate cancer. It could be all sorts of stuff. And I don't have, uh, I can't just go out and get it. So January 15th, luckily the extension is, is there and they can't get you for pre-existing conditions. But now I've got to try to figure out how, uh, how to do it. And I'm, I don't, you know, I don't even know how, how it works. It's been so long. Usually I go through work and stuff, but it's like, you know, they need to fix this system better than anything. Like I, now I know why there's Fugle fan members like, you know, healthcare sucks. His name is healthcare sucks. Cause he had the same, you know, a lot, some of us have seen this and I know I'm not the only one. I know this happens to other people. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it in my family members and that, and it sucks when it's you and it comes around and you actually have something really scary. And then you're looking at paying out of pocket for it. It's, it's, it's horrifying. And I've got four kids and I, I just think if, if something is wrong and I'm, I, I've had issues for like two years now and I swear because I don't have insurance, they have not actually properly diagnosed me. And that's because they do the bare minimum to keep you stable, which again, that's what ERs do, right? And I have gone to urgent care for certain things, but it always ends up being expensive. And it's like when you're trying to keep your car running and through all this other BS that we're do going through, all of us are going through shit times. So, um, you know, so I still need your prayers. I'm really freaked out. And yeah, people were just, um, somebody said something on Twitter. They're like, yeah, well, you, you say, you know, doctors are stupid, but the second you're sick and then you're like, oh, I'll do whatever they say. I have never said doctors are stupid. In fact, there's thousands of things that doctors do right. There are thousands of uh, medical advancements that make us, you know, instead of living to live to 40, we live until 80. My problem is with the pharmaceutical companies and with the price of things and with uh, the greediness and the absolute corruption that goes into paying off doctors and doing this sick crap uh, to, to possibly hold back cures uh, due to bureaucracy or hold back cures uh, to, to milk that, you know, $5,000 pill, right? Uh, a pill a day for $5,000. You know, how does it matter uh, what kind of insurance is going into that or lawsuits or whatever? They say it's so expensive now is because of all the lawsuits that doctors go through. So if they make a mistake, then they get sued and their whole, you know, they get sued for $2 million. Well, because of their insurance company, everything's all, you know, super out of whack. In Canada, you would have to wait. You might have to wait six months to get your broken finger fixed, but you'll get it fixed. In Mexico, people complain because in Mexico, you can get somewhat okay coverage and you can go in and just get it done. And it might be a couple grand if it's something serious, uh, but you can get it done for a reasonable price. So you, you have to find a middle ground where you can get seen before you die and pay uh, a reasonable amount bef you know, before you end up croaking. I can't imagine how many people croak because of money. You should not be dying because you don't make enough. And then uh, you shouldn't be dying because you make just enough. Think about that. That is the stupidest rule ever. So, yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't, I, if I, I guess it, it, there's been many months last, especially this last year where it was like, if I, if I did have an extra $400 coming out or $500 coming out of my check, I wouldn't have made, I wouldn't have paid something super important. I mean, there's been months where it comes down to just barely get getting, uh, everything paid. So I, I just think it's, uh, I, and if, if you guys have a story like that, leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear from other people that have been screwed by the system. I almost feel like doing a whole series of videos on it with people's ex, uh, explanations of what happened to them. It's just, it's such a corrupt system and it, it, it pisses me off, but it also, it also makes me, uh, really, really 
just thank the people that are behind us and that are praying for me because I think prayer works. It was like right after I posted it, that, he came back and he said the kidney work was fine. So I thought that was that was cool. Go ahead. Yeah, the I was going to say, Adam, prayers are probably the, the best thing right now. You know, I'm obviously outside of a leprechaun at the end of a rainbow, right? But, but seriously, prayers are the best thing. Like it happened to Alexi and, you know, we asked for everyone's prayers and we got lucky. Like we were, the doctor said he had never seen a break like this that didn't require surgery yet. He was said, this one doesn't require surgery. So he was, you know, not because we didn't have insurance because he was going to do it either way, but he's like, yeah, and we'll, <clears throat> we'll see how it goes week after week. And fortunately, you know, it was just the stars that aligned on that recovery that it did not require surgery, which would have, you know, like you said, it'd be thirty-five, forty thousand dollars for surgery. So, um, yeah. So, well, at least offer, prayer. at least offer payment plans. Like some places don't actually, I don't get that. Like, even if you're paying for 30 years, they should, I mean, you should, uh, you know, especially if it's like an exorbitant, crazy price, somebody cuts off their pinky and get it sewn back on for two hours, an $80,000 bill. That's absurd. Where does that money go? It goes to big farm. Try double that. Oh, that's right. It wasn't it like $160,000. The yeah, bill that that guy got over a hundred thousand. Yeah. To, to have somebody sew your pinky back on. For that price, I would do it myself. For that price, I will open a pinky sewing company. I mean, geez, you only need one pinky f to live for the rest of the year. I need to learn how to sew pinkies. Does anybody know how to sew pinkies? Uh, DM me. Survival Living. You call. You never ask for anything, but Fugle Fam will be there on this. You need, my friend. Just let us know we got your back. There's not, I mean, there's not, even if, here's the thing, even if uh, that's what, yeah, you don't need to do that. Even if uh, it did, <laughs> you you know, you're a creator. It would actually uh, be till February until I got it anyways. So by then, I, that's why I need to like figure out this uh, insurance thing. Either way, that's still, uh, it wouldn't kick in until fe February 1st. So that means this isn't covered. That's just stupid. That's like, how stupid is this this uh, stupid country? So that's what's going on. I would normally not put this on a normal show. I'd usually put it on Twitter, but a lot of people were asking. I didn't put that I was in the hospital on the show. Uh, but again, a lot of people, uh, just unbelievable amount. I, I also said that I would... Um, I wasn't going to try to give specific stuff. People uh, that are either doctors or naturopaths or whatever, I get a thousand messages with good and bad advice. Just understand that I I, uh, I learned my lesson. I took some bad advice and I thought it sounded good. So I just try to stay away from the, the advice if you can. If it's not something that's super simple, like drink more, you know, honey and tea or something, you know, just understand I, I there's not much I can... Uh, I'm not, I'm trying not to take too much, uh, do it yourself advice anymore. Um, again, I do think for most things and especially, you know, established things that doctors are right. I don't even think that all of the things are bad. Just this one, right? There's certain ones that I believe are bad. Uh, and one other one that, you know, your kids might be different their whole life because of it. Right. So I, I do believe, you know, it's, but people on Twitter acted like, oh, you know, everybody's just backwoods like, oh, if I break my arm off, I'm going to go tie a wood piece on it and, and swing it around and, and, you know, yell like a banshee and it will fix itself. No, we go to the doctor like everybody else. It's just, it, you know, the way that people have been pitted against to each other, they think that the other people are just like some two tooth shotgun toting overall wearing idiot or something when in reality most of the people that you're talking to are you know far more educated than the one insulting them anyways um by the way thank you to Ilea who in the back end or the dm part of it you know said some nice things and uh was very concerned. Uh, I think I told her what she was one of the first people I told about it. Um, but yeah, it's really scary crap. 
Joseph Newhouse, thank you. Uh, Bible Talk. Ilea, get all the tests you need. Then I, see, I you know, I uh, send, said go fund me. Fugle fam's got your back. See, I don't, I didn't even do, uh, I don't, I don't, I didn't even do Melissa uh, Schumann's thing because we don't, those things are just, uh, I would almost, that, that give go thing, that one might be something, but uh, now people call it the go fraud me, right? So I don't even like doing those unless you absolutely know that person directly, like in real life. But who knows? Do you, man? You are appreciated. Thank you again, Lewis. Bible talk for uh, common people. If I missed anybody, I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, just understand this is a short show, and I apologize for going on so long about that. Um, go to the bottom. There's tons of stuff here. Dex, do you want to explain a couple of the things here? <clears throat> yeah, so there's a, a new robot that uh, is acting like the Terminator, and it can actually react to humans invading its personal space. Check that article out if you want to see the video that's in there. Watch um, the lots video. Lots of other things going on. Yeah, watch that video. It's crazy. Um, lots of other things. Like, here, Intel apologized to China uh, because they said don't support anything coming out of uh, Xinjiang. But then... Uh, they apologized because they thought they were getting, you know, they were getting hand slapped by China for it. But then the next day, the U.S. comes out and bans everything from that region. It's sort of ironic, but that happened a few days ago. But take a look. Uh, plenty of other things going on. If you get down to the web only content, it's a lot more, uh, you know, cited, a little bit more controversial. There's stuff we can't talk about. Uh, you know, take all that with a grain of salt. Go take a look. Um, AJ's wife was arrested. Uh, lots of other interesting little things happening down there. So go take a look, marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. Scroll down to web-only content. Or <clears throat> if you're on YouTube, just open the description and click that first link. Yeah, so uh, I, I didn't... The one thing that I was surprised by was AJ's wife, right? You would think it would be him, but apparently uh, no. And then that video of the robot is so creepy. I thought it was a fake video, like one of those... Uh, like one of those fake Boston Dynamics videos that they've made where they're beating up the robot, but it's it's actually like CGI. I thought it was that. Dex, to the to the best of your knowledge, that video is a real video, correct? Yeah, the best of my knowledge, it is. And yes, that was a very lifelike. Um, the eyes, the blink, the facial reactions, the, yeah, everything about it. It follows um, it the finger, walk, but. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, that is so creepy. It, it was crazy. It follows the finger and it blinks like it's just... Go to the website, go to marfuglenews.com, make sure to pop over. And then, uh, again, you can also go over and uh, get your stuff from my Patriot Supply there. If you do that, that can help us out. Then uh, everybody, every time that you go over and get food or supplies or gadgets from my Patriot Supply... Uh, you end up helping us. They'll give us a small commission of that. Uh, that helps us, again, financially. Uh, thank you. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. Appreciate it. You don't have to. Again, this usually, in most cases, gives you a discount, and it helps us. I feel like that's a win-win because if it's something you're already going to do, that's if you're going to do it. If not, or if you, don't, if you uh, are having problems, and if you're in the same case I am, then don't do that. Uh, there are plenty of really good resources like Alaska Prepper to make your own stuff or to get by cheaply and do it on your own. It is a lot of work, but I'm sure there's plenty of you that are very smart and can do it yourself. Again, if you want to get it pre-done and everything else and you're already going to do it, then please go through ours and uh, that would help us financially. That helps me split everything with Dex. Again, I appreciate you guys. Again, People do the math for what we get donated. That is for two people and two families. So again, that it is right down the middle. So thank you so much. Appreciate all of you guys. Love you. Uh, and uh, have a good night. Everybody, Dex, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Much love, brother. Hope you're feeling better soon. It is now time for the shout outro. It's not an outro. It's not an outro. It's a shout outro. <laughs> Bible talk for common people. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. It says, hope it's just stones, bro. God bless. It is not. That's that's the freaky part. So, yeah. Andrew Brown, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Have a good night.
see.